This is the Starlight Express Alumni Podcast. Hi, everybody. My name is Scott Westmoreland, and I was a member of the first national U.S. touring company of Starlight Express for about a year in 1990. And um, this is my skate from the show. And the reason why it's so pristine is not because I take such good care of my skates, but because this skate never actually touched the stage. <laughs> I was a member of the Starlight Chorus, and uh, I'm proud and pleased to represent us uh, boothers, as they called them. Go yeah, to the boothers, right? Uh, exactly. Well, you know, it's funny. Well, thank first of all, thank you so much for coming on here, and I appreciate it. We're all alumni. We all added to telling this incredible story and we all have our history and so um I, it's funny the other day i was talking to one of the alumni and i think it was uh, i think it was jc jc said that um uh that she she wanted to thank everyone everyone that was involved and she started we started listing all these people that were involved in telling the story and it's not just the actor on the stage. So so much goes on behind the scenes oh, that, yeah. that is so crucial. And uh, so Renee, uh, Renee and I always, always want to lift up those that help uh, the, those that are on the stage to, to tell the story. So thank yeah. you so much for that. Now, how did you first find out about Starlight Express? It's a great question. Um, well, I've been an actor. I was an actor since like 12. I had, you know, my equity card and did a lot of professional, um, you know, stage acting, musical theater in, in the Southern California, L.A. area where I grew up. And, um, you know, I had done I'd always been a principal in a lot of shows. So I did like a long run of a dinner theater production of Oliver. I played the Dodger and I had done a lot of dance shows and stuff. I had done Seven Brides several times. I had done West Side Story and all this stuff. So I was actually in the process of, of like two or three callbacks for Les Mis at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, same casting company, Johnson Lip, I believe. Yes. And so um, they, Johnson Lip had called me prior I don't know, a few weeks before and said, hey, there's going to be an opening in Les Mis in San Francisco coming up in the next few months. Stick around. Let us know what your availability is. Tell us if you're going to be gone for any extended period of time. So um, I got this call from Johnson Liff and I thought, oh, it's Les Mis. It's Les Mis. And they said, don't get excited. It's not Les Mis. <laughs> but we have work for you or potential work for you um, with Starlight Express. The national tour is at the Pantages here in L.A. They're losing one of their... Uh, Starlight Chorus singers, which was Lon Hoyt. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so um, at the time, I was staying voice with a fabulous singer, Vincent Perillo, who had been in the Cats Chorus. So, you know, Andrew Lloyd Webber liked to have, you know, a, a studio uh, booth to enhance, you know, the vocals in the show because of the demands of the performers on stage physically. So I was familiar with the, you know, with the, with the chorus you know, concept. And so I said, yeah, yeah, you know, that'd be great. So they said, okay, just go down, prepare, you know, a song, go down to the Pantages. So of course I went down and I sang and Lon was playing piano, Lon Hoyt. And I sang, I think I sang, um, Not while I'm around from Winnie Todd, kind of a, you know, ballad thing. And he said, oh, that was great. You know, and he said, do you know the music in the show for Starlight? I'd never seen it. I said, I, I don't. He said, oh, it was really, really, really easy, really easy. So he, he, showed, he, kind of plunked out, you know, three or four different parts of different songs. And he sang first and then had me. And I like to mimic because I'm a pretty good impressionist. So I literally said, I'm going to sing exactly like Lana Hoyt. And I tried to sound like him. And he goes, wow, that sounded just like me. So it went really, really well. I drove home thinking, that was good. You know, I think I'm going to get this. So I got home. I think I was a little tired. I think I took a nap, fell asleep. Sure enough, the phone rang woke me up. Uh, I had this little piano phone. It was the shape of a piano and it had a really shrieking, piercing, you know, it's like, well, grab the phone. And it was Randy Whitescarver. And he said, Hey, congratulations. You know, if you want the job, it's yours. And so that was it. I was, you wow. know, that was awesome. began, your journey. Began, your journey. began your journey, began your journey. Now, what was the rehearsal process for you? Like, wow. I mean, really, pretty simple now, I don't, were you just were you thrown in what 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 part was the show still in well, rehearsals 
Yeah, here's the thing. Randy said, um, you know, look, we're here in L.A. for a couple more weeks. You're a member of the company now, so you're welcome to come any days you want, see the show as many times as you want, hang out backstage, sit in the booth during the show, whatever. And we'll also have some formal, you know, music rehearsals uh, for you. So I said, okay. And so I did. I was like, you know, I was I was going to school at the time. I was just about to finish college. But hey, you know, you're hungry for work. You're like, yes, I'm in. I'm going to be a part of this. So I don't know if I came every day, but I mean, I came often and kind of out. We, we rehearsed in the, in the lobby of the Pantages. They rolled out, you know, upright grand piano or whatever. And Lon played and we went through that. And then he gave, he actually made me a, a cassette of his track in the show. And he just said, this is you just memorize music. I think we went, my family and I took a short, like weekend in San Diego together. And I just brought it with me and listened to it. And I learned the excuse me, the music in like two or three days. And so I was like ready, but, you know, so then I went, I came back from San Diego and, and, and kind of came to the show a few times. And then here's the funny story. I wasn't supposed to start till Tuesday. Okay. Of like the final week in LA and it's Sunday and I happened to be there and there was two shows. So I came to the matinee and we, you know, watched the show and everything. And we, we went out to, to lunch and, um, there's a funny story about that too. Here I am, brand new guy. You guys don't know me from Adam. You don't know anything about me. I'm nobody. And and Ron DeVito, who was Greaseball, is sitting in his dressing room. And I walk by and it's lunchtime and everyone's kind of gone. And I stuck my head in Ron DeVito's dressing room and went, hey, uh, you want to go get some lunch? And he looked at me like, no, I'm, I'm good. You know, <laughs> like, who are you? Are you the janitor or what? You know? So anyway, we, we went to lunch. And I had a, like Thai food or something that had a lot of MSG in it. And I was kind of feeling the effects of that. I was really tired and kind of at it. But I thought, I'll stay for the night show. So I went back. I went in there. And Lon goes, hey, you're going to do the show tonight. I said, what? I don't go on until Tuesday. He goes, no, no, I'm, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I'm tired. I don't want to do it tonight. <laughs> you're going to do it. I was like, what? So that's what happened. I actually wow. started the show a couple days early after wow. rehearsal. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Now, what was that like for you? The first time being on there and just your experience? Oh. Well, first of all, and you'll see this is a repeating um, pattern of my interview. That I, I, I love the show. I, I love Android Weber's music. And when I, I did see the show from the audience. thing, so. Oh, I was just thrilled for the work. Here we were at the Pantages. It's a first national company. You know, it's not like a little bus and truck one nighter thing. You know, we were sitting down two to four weeks in every city. It was a big deal. You know, they advertised it big here in LA and Hollywood. So I was thrilled. You know, even though I had done a lot of shows as principal characters, just to have the work and to be a part of the company and everything. And I think on my first, I think it was my first official day, which was Tuesday, um, Jimmy Lockett comes down right before only you and he's like come here for a second and i was like what what okay and so i'm following jimmy lockett and we're going up to the stage and everything and he's you know about to sing on the side so he goes stand in front of me so i stood in front of me puts his hands on my shoulders and then all of a sudden only you have the power and i was like oh dang you know i was jolted with the starlight right there and it was fantastic. Well, that did he explain why he did? Did he do that just to pump you up and get you? Yeah, I think it was something he did kind of for new, you know, for new cast members. To kind awesome. of get them. Yeah. And so, I'm, you know, it was fantastic. And Jimmy and I went on. I consider Jimmy to be, you know, a good friend and such an inspiration. He, he was so much a part of my journey. And so was the cast, you know, because the, the show for us in the booth was – you know, pretty set. It was pretty much the same every night because there weren't things like you guys experienced, you know, with dealing with the elements in the stage and different audiences and everything. So for us, a lot of it was just the camaraderie between us during the show. Scott from, from Starlight. Scott. Is it Renee? Scott, hey. Hi. How are you? I'm doing great. Oh, so you know, look, how come she doesn't look a day older, Peter? What's up with that? Well, because she's beautiful. She's yeah. she, she's Miss Renee. How come I got the wrinkles, the gray hair, and the glasses, and Renee's no. like, oh, hi, I just finished the show last night. <laughs> how are you, Scott? I heard you saying something about vocals, and I was like, I think that's Scott. I'm doing great. It's so oh, nice awesome. to see you. That's awesome. It's good to see you. Of course, I check on you on Facebook all the time, and I see all the wonderful things you're doing with your kids and everything. It's just 
fantastic. Yeah, I, I got a student uh, from England that I got to get ready to coach now. So wow, yeah. thank you for popping in. It's wonderful to see you. Yeah, you too. You take care. Bye. <laughs> see ya. Bye. <laughs> I thought that was Scott's voice. That's funny. Oh, cool. yeah. Every once in a while, Renee will be in, in the studio. And can you close it, please? Yeah, I will. Okay, she'll be in the studio and she'll crash She'll crash an interview. <laughs> yeah, my, my wife was just here right before we went live and she's in her robe and stuff. And I'm like, hey, honey, you want to come in for the interview? She's like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Hey, that was a great interruption. I, I tell her, crash anytime you want. Crash oh, anytime yeah, you want. Absolutely. Well, let's, because I, I know we're hot, uh, hot on time. We have about 18 minutes, which is great okay. because uh, um, so y memories. I know Jimmy Lockett, other performers there. What's some of your great? You just shared a couple, but what are other great memories that just come to mind right now? Uh, well, gosh, there's so many because like, I, you know, being on a national tour as opposed to the Broadway, which is a sit down, you're kind of in the same place touring. You know, it's all kind of about what city you're in and, you know, the sites and the things that the, the, the traveling offers. That and the fact that the company was, and this is just going on what Jimmy was saying in the last interview, the company was so unique and incredible. And although I had lead roles in Big River and lots of other shows, being in just what my little bit I did in this show, just being with this unique and special and amazing group of people was one of the best years of my life. And he was talking about the talent. I mean, that cast was stellar, as you know. I mean, Reva Rice and Sean McDermott and, you know, Ron DeVito and Jimmy Lockett and Eric Clausel and, you know, just I'm missing so many people, Domery Church and Rochelle Rack, and it just goes on and on and on with just unbelievably exceptional performers and people. Um, that was really like my memories. Of course, the different cities. I mean, I, I also understudied the voice of control, which was really cool. So I got at the Kennedy Center, got to play the voice of the boy that narrates the show when um, Laurie Mm -hmm. was on vacation and things like that so those were really cool things too meeting pre you know president bush um at the kennedy center that right. was really cool you know as you know there were always celebrities where we went zz top in memphis and bb king and mm -hmm. carol channing was in la and of course andrew lloyd weber came out you know and chatted with us in la so all those things were you know just mm -hmm. amazing uh things that you just don't get to do so you know, you know, what's awesome is that uh and you've probably already you've seen already had uh seen some of the interviews already just the life lessons that have been learned mm -hmm. and uh that's for me because personally there are so many lessons that i learned in my experience with starlet express and everyone uh, with no exception have a lessons that they've learned that they took that are life lessons that they continue to use some because they're in an educational position share it well, myself as well renee as well we share this wisdom and uh, lessons, life lessons. So what are some of your life lessons that you draw from your experience with Starlight? Gosh, you know what? It's so deep. It's so deeper than than what you would think. You know, of course, there it's always a lesson lesson professionally when you get to go on, you know, the road with a Broadway show. That That's always really great professionally. You know, you learn from the talent and being around it and all that stuff. But really, like, I have to go back to Jimmy Lockett. He's such an exceptional person in my life, although I don't really talk to him. It's been a long time. It was great to see his face, by the way, in the interview. Um, Jimmy was like my guru on that tour. I mean, you know, like we started off just by like, you know, we're sports fans. So we would, you know, Monday night, that was kind of our thing. Monday night, we'd watch Monday night football, get some Chinese food or whatever, and just talk. And, you know, that was kind of something that that was like my little connection with Jimmy during the show. But we would also then start just talking about life. You know, here I'm 24 years old. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. And, you know, none of us did. We all made mistakes and said dumb things and did dumb things. And Jimmy just, his wisdom just poured out from every pore. And, um, you know, he started saying, hey, have you ever read the book, you know, Way of the Peaceful Warrior? Hey, have you ever read the book Personal Power from Tony Robbins all stuff? And I was like, what, what, what? No. So I started reading this stuff and it really launched me into a lifelong journey that I'm on still and, and you know, of just personal development and spiritual growth and all that stuff. And it just was so integral in just my life, you know, and hopefully I've gone on to, I teach at Orange County School of the Arts. I teach art. Wow. Um, and um, hopefully, you know, I've paid it 
forward to a lot of other people. It's just like we all really truly are connected. You know, you always hear that in spiritual circles. You know, like, how are we all connected? I'm you're over there, I'm over here, you have this like, I have this dislike, whatever. But we are, you know, we all share the same energy. And creativity all comes from the same place and love all comes from the same place. And so it was it was powerful. You know, I also like I spoke about Ron DeVito, Ron, my little connection with Ron and how we got to be, I consider buddies during the show is we had the company softball team. So he respected the heck out of me because I had a good bat, a good glove. So, you know, he was like, oh, you're one of us now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, you're not just the guy over there in the booth singing, you know, you're you contribute big time to the show. So that was kind of, you know, I, I love playing, you know, softball, every city we went to, we played again, we smoked phantom when we were here and they, you know, the TV cameras, the news was there. And, you know, we played Les Mis in I think Washington DC. And, you know, that was a really big part of it too. So it's much more than just for me, just singing, you know, every night singing the show, just being a part of this large 75 member community, which included, you know, tech and makeup and hair and costumes and, you know, sound and, you know, John McDee and Phil Reno and the, all the music guys and, wow. you know, just all those people, they're all just so talented and so tremendous. And they all kind of led up to the, the whole experience. You know, you're absolutely right. And, you know, it's, it's awesome because I, uh, I where this podcast is going is where I, I, I'll be interviewing if anyone and everyone that was part of this experience because it's it's about life about humanity is it's just about living every day um everyday challenges and experiencing the ups and the downs of everyday life regardless of uh what kind of work you do we just happen to be doing performing arts at that time in 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 time right and it was starlet express and we have that common denominator and many of us went different directions but that made us all because we all, in our way, there was tears, blood, sweat, brokenness, and hardcore experience that we all experienced. Because when somebody went much down, sweat I had, but <laughs> well, but you know what? But I'm, I, I, I know for certain that when one of us got hurt, everyone felt it. When there was a, when sure. there was something that went on in someone's family, sure, you know, we all felt it because we were on this, you know, we, we create this little world of starlight traveling around around the united states and i've done many tours and that's what happens you become you create this little world and all of a sudden you know outside of that world like a family member gets really sick or passes away it it, it goes right through that uh, that world and so we all experience that and sure. as long as somebody falling on stage and getting hurt and having yeah. to be taken to the hospital we all experience that oh my god what happened why right. did the show stop you right. know because there were times the show had to stop Right. You right. down there said, so why is it stopping? <laughs> right. Plus, we got to know the family because family members, husbands, wives, significant yeah. others, you know, sons, daughters, whatever, would come and be a part of our family if we were close to where people grew up, mm -hmm. you know. And so, yeah, you do. You really you become this large community in this family. And it, it you know. Like seeing you now, I haven't talked to you since the show probably, but yeah. I feel like, you know, there he is, you know, yeah. You know, it's like time doesn't, it just yeah. picks right back up. Yeah, it brings us right back to that, pla that place, but yet we speak from where we are today, but we have that, which is what's awesome. That's great. Even those alumni that I've spoken to that I never met, never worked with, but because of Starlight and the experience of Starlight, as soon as we get on, it's like we're connected and it's incredible. Exactly. Now, as we as we wrap this up, Scott, uh, what are some of your passions? I know you have a family because I saw you have this beautiful picture of you and your family on Facebook. Yes, I do. Um, I have a 20 year old son who is a sophomore in college. I have a 17 year old daughter who is a junior in high school. And um, I went on to actually for after Starlight, I, I, I continued in the business for a while for a number of years. And then I got this opportunity. I, I'm an artist, a, a fine artist like Ricky Mejica. Yeah. We were two like successful professional artists that came out of the show. Um, anyway, so I got this opportunity to work in the entertainment industry as an illustrator. So I started um, 
working on, you know, motion picture advertisement and major, you know, theatrical advertisement as an illustrator, as an artist. And then I got hired at Disney and I worked there for 10 years on staff. Wow. And that's where I met my wife. And then when I left Disney, um, I just developed my own brand. And here's like my calendar. Um, a lot Very of cool surf tropical stuff. This is the 2020 calendar. Um, you know, I do a lot of licensing. I have licensing agents kind of all over the country and we do hundreds of different products that my images go on. And um, so, you know, I get to sort of work here. My commute is through the kitchen and, to, you know, hang a left, which <laughs> I <laughs> sounds, like, sounds like my commute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, isn't it great? Uh, especially living in Southern California when every freeway is just like a parking lot. Yeah. So anyway, I get to just open my window and, you know, we have a nice pool here in Southern California. You got to have a pool. So we you know, turn the sheet flows on with the water and here I sit, get to sit here and, and draw and paint, you know, for a living all day. So it, it's a wonderful life. And, you know, of course, uh, much to my family chagrin, I turn on YouTube and I blast, you know, I sing. I still <laughs> sing, you know, just to myself here in the studio, in my studio. And they're like, geez, dad. You know, can you just sing normal? No, man, I'm a stage singer. I got to, I got to. Uh, that's too, that's too yeah. funny. So now they want to find out because on, on your podcast, we're going to have a page. Everyone, everyone, you're watching this on this page right below. If you want to see Scott's illustrations, his work, uh, go to the link right below. So tell everyone sure. where they can go if they wanted to see your work. Okay. Well, actually, I mean, I, I'll, my, work is all over the internet. So literally you could just type my name, Scott Westmoreland art into any search, Yahoo, Google, whatever. And there's literally millions and I'm not kidding you, millions of hits and pages of my stuff on products and in galleries and in, Love it. you know, print um, like art.com or allposters.com. Um, Scott Westmoreland art.com. I think, I think I don't even use my own website cause I have a publisher too, which is Greg Young publishing. So my stuff's all on there. Uh, and then now I'm actually starting a bit of my own company. It's out of um, Ridgeway, Colorado, and we're going to be doing a lot of the mountain, you know, camping, outdoorsy activity type artwork on products. So although I'm known for the beach and the surf and the tropical and the Hawaii on um, branching out now into more of a like camping, hunting, fishing, you know, all that kind of outdoorsy stuff, too. So there's plenty to Plenty of, of that to see and plenty more in the future. Well, I love it. I love it because I tell a lot of my clients, I work with clients and with, I do a lot of the marketing and promotions and helping them understand social. And I tell them, you want to be easy to find <laughs> because you can right. find me because all you got to do is Google my name. Yeah. All this stuff comes up and that's yeah. great that you're doing that. It's awesome. I can't wait for people to do that. Now, Ken, uh, uh, share with me some things that I can put on your page so I can just show some people there. I love that calendar. If they want to get a calendar, that'd be awesome. If they links to get, uh, get that calendar, that'd be excellent. But Scott, I always give you guys uh, the alumni, the last word. And so what do you want to say to all the other alumni, to the fans, because the fans are loving these on um, podcasts and the alumni are loving it and alumni uh, on stage and behind uh, backstage dressers makeup artists the, the crew uh, everyone so what's the word you want to say to them well i just you know i'm so thrilled and honored and pleased to have been you know a part of it um you guys were just so talented and we sat back there you know, in our booth, wherever it was, sometimes it was in a dressing room, sometimes it was right off stage, some, wherever it was, green room, wherever they decided to set up. And we were fans, too. I mean, we were in the show and our voices were a huge part of the performance every night. But we were fans and we got to see the show every night on a screen. One screen had, you know, the stage with everything that was going on so we could, you know, match up and link up what's going on. And then one of the conductor. And so we were we were fans and we would just sit there in awe and just like go gosh you know did you see that you know Dwight Toppins jump or Ricky Mika's jump or you know whatever I mean whoever was doing their thing on stage it was just unbelievable and you know we all got chills when you know the 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 soloists were singing their thing and you know it was just fantastic you know it was a big show it was a bright show it, it had such a you know like I know it's been alluded to before that it was a spectacle show and everything and 
not if you're not listening, you know, not if you're really listening. I mean, if you're really listening, it's about summonsing that, that starlight in you, you know, that power, that, that, um, magic, whatever you want to call it, that everybody has that everyone is a genius. Everyone's a genius. Just believe in yourself and do it. And, and, you know, subtly the lessons that I've learned from people like Jimmy, um, carried with me as I had interviews and things or other auditions or was, you know, trying to launch a new company or whatever. And, you know, you get that little voice in your head, you can't do this. Who are you? You're just this guy. No one's going to give a, you know, rats about you. you No, wait a minute. No, (laughs) I have the power. (laughs) You don't have to be too uh, hokey about it, but yeah, you know, it sticks with you. It's part of you. And Starlight was was that that was the message and it was it was a fantastic journey and just congratulations to everybody that's been in the show you know um you're all uber talented it's crazy people don't realize you know until i put on these skates that i never you know had to use and just rolled around on them you know it's hard it's hard to sing to act to dance to tell a story and and then you know throw in rolling around on an uncontrollable surface to, to boot so my hat's off to everybody and i'm so proud to have been a part of it. Well, Scott, thank you so much for being a part of this project and uh, sharing your journey. I really do appreciate that. And uh, you have a great day, buddy. Thank you, Peter. You too. Hope to uh, be talking to you more and more on Facebook and stuff. We'll stay. We'll definitely stay connected. <laughs> All right, man. Take care. God bless. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone, for joining me on this episode of Starlight Express Alumni Podcast. Next week, I will get together with another alumni. Be sure to subscribe. You can subscribe right here on the website at starlightexpress.club. We are definitely on the iTunes and Stitcher, and we're looking to get on the other platforms. So make sure you check there, subscribe there, and stay connected. If you are a Starlight alumni, please be sure to reach out to me if you would like to be on the podcast. Would love to hear your stories and share your story with the Starlight Express fans and other alumni. Look forward to sharing with you next week. Everyone, have a great day.